Today we're gonna break down the camera row filter in Photoshop. Hey there, my name is Ali, and today's tutorial was a request actually from Omar. Uh, he asked me to explain the camera row filter in details. So if you have any like requests, make sure you submit them and I'll do a tutorial for you. Okay, I'm using this photo. It's from www.unsplash.com uh, I picked that one to explain camera row filter because it has like light areas and dark areas So let's get started First, where is camera row filter? It's in filter Camera row filter If you can't find it if you can, or if you can find it and you can't access it It's because when you created your new file You had it in CMYK you must have it in RGB so the camera row filter would work because the camera row filter works in RGB. Okay, the second thing I want to say about the camera row filter, if for example we go to the camera row filter and we just brighten everything up, okay, now we can't go back and change what we did. However, if you press right click on your rear and convert it to smart object and you go to camera row filter, and you do any edit it will be added on a filter itself leaving the original now on this mask you can actually paint with any color to remove the camera row filter effect with black I mean and you can like close it and open it to see the before and after and you can like you can open it again and bring back what you did so always like if you like but this will make your file like heavier if you have a slow computer this will be a problem but if your computer is working fast make sure you always use that so you can go back okay the first thing in camera row filter we can make a full screen mode by this button okay the first thing I'll start from top right this is if you can see we have here something it's called blacks then the shadows exposure highlights and whites and this is called the histogram okay this is the data of our photo we have here a lot of data in the shadows shadows are like this is like the middle grays this is the dark grays this is like the super dark glare grays or almost black same for the highlights this is like the bright grays and this is almost white okay so now most of our photo data is in the shadows and in the black we have a lot of data here and basically because in the photo like you see we have a lot of dark areas and only few bright areas here and there and the light on the floor okay now since we're done with the like the histogram two things we have in the histogram we have these small arrows one is shadow clipping one is highlight clipping if you have the shadow clipping on and your photo is too dark what's gonna happen is it will start pulling putting blue for you if you close it this means, the blue actually means that this is completely black. There is absolutely no data. So, you, this can be useful if you have a dark photo and you want to, like, and you want to brighten it up a little bit. You can just, like, increase your exposure so it's working good. Okay, and same for the highlights. We, if you have the highlights on, the very bright areas will be covered in red. So, you know that you should pull, like, your exposure back until it's like not clipping and just close it. okay let's get started with the first module it's called the basic module the first thing is the white balance it's as shot you can change it to auto it will make it like automatically it will adjust all the colors uh, this is looking like a little bit yellowish so that's why it went to the blue and it's like warm so it went to the green because it had magenta okay the temperature is like just going to blue and yellow and green and magenta tint okay the same for the ones below you can press auto it will automatically do for you like adjust the whites and blacks and everything and you can press default to bring it back to default the exposure is like taking all the data on the histogram and just moving it right or moving it left okay what the contrast does is it takes all the information in the histogram from the middle anything on the right of the middle it will move it to the right anything on the left of the middle will move it to the left 
So the darker will get darker, the bright will get brighter, increasing the contrast. Okay, the highlights, like we said, it was this area. So if we take the highlights and we move it to the right, it will take these areas and move them to the right. If we move it to the left, it will move them to the left. And the opposite of it is the shadows. We move them to the left. We're moving these areas, the dark areas, to the left and bring them back. Same for the whites. The whites is the absolute like whitest areas. And same for the blacks. Okay. Most like photographers, what they do, they take the shadows, they just pull it up and the highlights, they will pull it down and then they will add contrast to the photo. A bit, just like a little bit. So you don't have any missing details in your photo. Okay, now we're done with these. Let's go to the clarity. The clarity will add like in the mid-tones, it will add contrast, making everything either clearer or if you reduce it, it will make everything like soft and blurry. Okay, the vibrance and the saturation. If you see we increase the vibrance, both of both of them increases like the color. The vibrance is a little bit smart. If we get to give 100% vibrance, you look at the photo now, then I'll control Z, then 100% saturation. Okay, both added colors. The saturation was a little bit stronger. The difference is the vibrance was made for human skin. It's a smarter filter. So you only use vibrance if you have like human skin and you don't want to affect it. Or if you like you have some oranges and light, you don't want it to go like extreme like that. You use the vibrance. It's a smarter like way to increase your, your uh, colors. Okay, the tone curve. The tone curve have two options, the parametric and the point. The parametric you have here highlights similar to the one at the back. But the difference here with the highlights is that you can change the point. So, for example, we make the highlights darker. You can change, like, which parts are exactly your highlights in the photo. This is the difference. Same for the, like, the shadows and the white and the darks. Okay, the point curve is exactly like the curves in the Photoshop. You can, like, do your own points. You can like bring the shadows up, bring the this down, start playing with the highlights. And again, you have your histogram. If you want to get rid of a point, for example, I don't want this point here. Just click on it and just move it down. It will disappear or move it uh, down and up. No, only down. This makes it disappear. Oh, this one will not disappear because it's the base point. You move it back to the corner. Okay, another thing we have, we have the channels. We can go to the red channel. Now we're only on the red and cyan channel. If we add in the mid-tones, we add red. If we detect, we add cyan. You can also like add several points, like make your own contrast and just get rid of them by pulling them all the way down. Or right or left or anywhere. Okay, same for the green. You can add magenta and green. Same for the blue. You can add like blue or add the opposite of blue, which is yellow. Okay, let's go to the detail the option. This is the first one, the sharpening. I'm going to zoom in so we can see better. If you increase the sharpening, it adds like detail to the edges of your photo. It makes everything like sharper. However, if you increase it while holding Alt, it will give you a view in black and white. This could help a little bit. This is the detail of the sharpening itself. You can increase it. It will make it like more sharper. Uh, the radius, sorry. And the detail will make it the radius will make like the sharpening circles bigger and the detail will add more detail. If you hold Alt while doing the radius, it will give you something like a high pass that only shows you like the sharpening areas and the same will happen if you hold Alt and do it in the details. The last thing which I like really the most is the masking. If you increase the masking, it will like almost completely remove it. In order to see what it does, you will hold Alt and start moving the mask. See, it's completely white when it's zero. This means it's affecting the whole photo. But if you start increasing it, now it will start adding black. Wherever there is black, it's not getting sharpened. Okay, if we increase it to 100, you will realize that it's only now targeting the edges. So now we're only sharpening the edges. If we reduce the detail and the radius and hold Alt and increase this one again, see now we're only sharpening a very small area of the edges of our photo. Okay, I'll bring it back. 
Okay, let's go with the luminance. The luminance is the opposite of sharpness. We increase the luminance. It makes everything softer. You hold Alt while doing it. It will also give you a black and white view. Okay, the luminance detail, if you decrease it to the max, it will like make it even more like blurry. If you increase it, it will make everything like more clear now. And you have the luminance contrast. Okay, let's bring it back to zero. Okay, now the HSL grayscale. Uh, this is like one of the most important things. This is every color have like a hue and saturation and like how bright or dark is it, which is the luminance. Now we have control of every single light. Let's say for example, this, these are oranges. We want to play around with the hue of these. We want to make them red. So I'm going to take the oranges, move them to the left. Now they are red. If I move them to the right, they, they will be like more to the yellow. Okay, you can play with this. Okay, I want them now, the oranges, to be more saturated. I can increase the saturation now or make them like black and white by reducing it. And in the luminance, I can make them brighter or make them dark. So this you have like control of every single color on its own. Okay, and you can also like convert it to grayscale and bring it back. Okay, the split toning is <coughs> adding highlights and shadows. Highlights, like we said, are the bright areas. Shadows are the dark areas. So if I tell him to add orange to my highlights and like some blue to my shadows and increase the saturation to 100 and increase the saturation to 100. Now in the dark areas, we have blue. In the bright areas, we have saturation. We can play around with the balance, make the shadows more, like take more of the photo or make the highlights take more of the photo. In this photo, if we leave it zero, our photo has more shadows than highlights because it's a dark photo overall. So that's why we have a little bit of orange compared to the blue. So if I want to balance it, I'll move it to the left. So we have equal orange and blue and I'll just bring the saturation back somewhere like here and there. Now we just added like some color grading to the photo. Okay, the lens correction. This one actually works if you have <coughs> like, <coughs> if you want to correct something with the camera. If you're like using a wide angle lens, you want it to be more like flat or something like that. And the deep fringe, the deep fringe, I can't explain it here. The deep fringe happens when you have a mountain and you have like some light behind of it. And there is like deep fringing on the edges. Sometimes you'll have some weird color on the edge. This is called the deep fringe, but it's not in this photo. And the vignette is like drawing like a black circle around your photo or a white circle around your photo. We'll, we'll not use it here. We'll like, because it's in the next module, the vignette. Okay, first in this one, the FX module, we have dehaze. If you increase dehaze, it will remove like all the fog in the photo, making it much more clear. If you reduce it, it will add fog to your photo, making it less clear. Okay, the grain is like adding noise to your photo. You see now we added like pieces of noise. You can increase its size, make, make them like bigger and make them either harder or soft. This will add like noise to your photo. The vignette now, this one is better because it has more options. You can like make it completely black or completely white. And you can play around with the midpoint, make it at the center or make it far away. You can play with the roundness, make it like a square shape or a circle. The feather, you can make it like very sharp or very feathered. And if you like, okay, it darkened everything, but you want it to reveal the highlights. So if you increase the highlights, it will automatically reveal all the highlights in your photo. I'm going to bring it back to zero. Okay. Now the camera calibration. This works if you have like a camera defined. It can fix automatically any problems with the photo. However, if not, you can play around with it still with every color. Now we have the red. We can make the reds like more to the purple or more to the yellow. Play with the greens or the blues. This one, many people actually, I see them use it by pulling the greens back, the blues, sorry. This will make your oranges more to the red and yellows more to the orange. And it will make all your blues and magentas more to the cyan. So this look, it gives you like some sort of like the teal and orange look. And many people use it. Okay, the last module is the presets. You can, like all the edits we made, we can make a new preset. Make sure like we highlight everything. We want all the preset to like work on all anyone we did from these. You can remove anyone you don't want. And let's name it like camera 
raw preset. Press OK. Now it's saved. If you open any photo and you click camera raw reset, what it will do, it will like bring back all the, the, the things you did. Okay, now let's press OK. Okay, now this is our camera raw filter. I'm gonna explain one more thing about it. Which are the tools up there. I'm gonna go with a few of them. The first one which is very important is the graduated filter. When you open it, make sure like everything is zero first. And there is no color here. What this does is... It creates some sort of a gradient. Let's go with like zero exposure. Okay, so now we have some sort of a gradient. You, when you pull, you have like two lines, the green and the red. Let's darken it even more, like completely black. Okay, now what happens is when you pull, oh, when you, I'll delete it and I'll do another one like this. Okay, now when we're pulling, Everything behind the green line will have 100% effect of what we did and then everything between the green and the red will be feathered gradually. That's why it's called like graduated filter. Okay, you can do like one like this maybe and you can play around. You can like, let's say we have need to, let's bring everything to zero. Let's say with the corners, we need to make them blue and adjust a little bit dark. I can pull another one like that. I can pull one like here. There. Yeah, something like that. Okay. I'm going to press this cancel. I'm going to open it again. Okay. Another one is the radial filter. You can draw like some sort of a circle. Let's say this circle, we want it like the same blue and dark. But what's happening is it's targeting what's outside the circle. So that's why we have this option. You can choose whether inside or outside and you can choose to feather it or leave it like sharp. Okay, and all these settings we went through before, it's the same settings in the camera row filter, but just on a circle or a point. However, there is something called the range mask. This is really important and really useful. Let's put it somewhere here, okay? Now we made like, let's make it just like completely black. And let's bring the temperature to... Now, okay, now the filter is only doing black. What the range mask does is you can choose it by color or luminance. Let's start with color. What color does is you can choose a color that only that color will be affected by this effect. So if I choose orange, only the orange in my photo will be affected by this darkness. So this is like you're choosing by a color. However, if I choose like a blue, the opposite will be made because these parts are blue. Okay. Let's make it by luminance. Luminance is actually how bright or dark something is. So now we have the range. Let's say we only wanted to target the bright areas. So now this darkness will only in be in the very bright areas in our photo. And you have the smoothness. You can make it like sharp transition or a soft transition. Okay, if we do the opposite, if we pull this all the way to the black, it will only take like our dark points and make it darker, leaving all the white areas the same way as it is. Okay, now I'm gonna press cancel, open it again. The last thing I'm gonna explain is gonna be the brush. The brush is the same as the filter and the graduated filter. Whenever I paint, it will make it darker because we had like uh, everything dark, whatever I paint. You can choose like to open the overlay or close it. It will just show you where you pressed your first click. It also have the range mask. It have everything. The only different is you have brush options. You can increase the size by right click and moving right and left. You can have it feathered like sharp or soft. And you can choose the flow and the density of like how strong or how weak the effect is going to be. Okay, another thing, let's say you like brushed some part and you want to remove areas. What you do is you hold Alt, you see the brush options changed. This is like because you're on the negative brush now when you're holding Alt. If I leave Alt, this is the positive. If I hold Alt, this is the negative. Now if I paint, it will start removing because now I'm doing like a negative effect. Okay, I guess that's it for the camera raw filter. If you have any requests, guys, make sure you, you like send it to me. And thank you for like listening. Bye.